Sup, homie? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming at you with Mailbox Horrors Part 12. Now, this is the installment in which I showcase the many, many titles that keep creeping up in my mailbox. In addition to the books, at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you guys a complete set of some really cool vintage horror magazines from the late 80s. So you definitely want to stick around for that. Uh, now, before we get into the mail, I do have a few uh, titles that I picked up recently from a brick and mortar shop. Uh, you see, I'm on spring break this week. It's been really nice. I really, really needed it. And uh, the other day, I went uh, with uh, this girl I'm seeing to the Natural History Museum in L.A., uh, which was super awesome, uh, by the way. Uh, amazing dinosaur exhibit there. I mean, like full-scale T-Rexes, Triceratops. Made me feel like a kid again. Uh, but after uh, we went to the museum, I uh, suggested that I take her to the Iliad uh, in North Hollywood, the absolute best uh, used bookstore of all time. Uh, she is quite a bookworm like me, so I thought she would appreciate it. And I swear to God, I was not even planning on getting anything myself. I thought I would just, you know, share the love a little bit and just show her because I know that she would appreciate it. I wasn't going to get anything, but of course, you know, knowing me, I, I still have yet to go into that shop and not walk out with at least a few things. And I did get a few things. I mean, who could resist? So we're going to start with those. So first of all, there is the uh, colorful array of bookmarks from the Iliad. Really cool. Okay, so the first one I found there is this one. Uh, this is Bugs by Theodore Rozak. This was published by Pocket in 1983. I mean, who could resist that, right? Like, I mean, when I saw this at first, I thought, okay, it's talking about like uh, like software bugs, right? That's what you would think. But no, evidently, it is like literal bugs coming out of the computers. And that's just amazing. And this is like early 80s computers. So what does it say? Uh, One little girl has dreamed that machines aren't perfect, that bugs in a computer can kill. But no one believes her. Until the bugs attack by the thousands, burrowing through human flesh, eating their victims to the bone in bloody microseconds. That sounds amazing. So, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely had to help on that when I saw it. Okay, the next one I found there is Mr. Apology by Campbell Black. Uh, this one, um, first of all, Really, really beautiful uh, artwork, right? I think this is, you know, kind of more of a thriller, but I was excited when I saw this because Campbell Black um, is a writer who also wrote under the pen name Thomas Altman, uh, and he, and under that name, he wrote a novel called Black Christmas, which has nothing to do with the film, but which I reviewed. It was actually my very first review, I think my very first video on this channel, uh, that I did, and I really, really loved that book. I loved the writing. You could tell that that uh, you know Campbell Black is, is you know definitely a cut above the rest in terms of just everything, really prose and characterization and story. And I've been meaning to read more of him ever since. So this is one that he wrote under his own uh, name, um, and uh, yeah, it sounds fun. Sounds kind of like a like I said, kind of more like a thriller. But uh, definitely worth picking up, especially for that, that lovely uh, painted cover there. Okay, uh, the next one I found is Panzer Spirit by Tom Townsend. And uh, this one was put out by Pageant Books in 1988. Um, I feel like this is kind of a rarer title and kind of goes for some money online. And that's pretty much the, the reason I picked it up. I'm not sure. Thought it would just be a good one to pick up. Um, I feel like I have seen this one uh, pretty expensive online. So uh, thought, yeah, it probably would not be a bad idea to get it. Some good old, um, I don't know, like World War II or like Nazi horror. There's going to be some more Nazi horror coming up later. But uh, yeah, I thought that would be a good one to get. All right, uh, the next one is Fairy Tale by Raymond E. Feist. Uh, this book was published by Bantam Spectra in 1989, the paperback edition here. Uh, it looks like it was first published in 1988. I do have another copy of this. I'm pretty sure I showed it in a previous haul, 
but uh, this one is in much better condition. And this is a book, um, also I don't think my other copy had the um, inner artwork there. Not all fairy tales are for children. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is apparently um, kind of like dark fantasy, like fantasy uh, mixed with horror elements. I read an, uh, a review of this in an old issue of Fangoria in their Nightmare Library section, and um, yeah, it sounded it sounded really cool. So uh, yeah, I definitely thought I would um, you know check that out at some point. And then the final one that I picked up from the Iliad is Ghost Child by Duffy Stein. Uh, this book was published by Dell in 1982. Uh, I have uh, another book by Duffy Stein, which I've shown in a previ previous video called The Owl's Fane Horror, which has a really kind of unsettling and, and creepy cover. And this one has a pretty, uh, pretty great cover as well. And there is uh, some, some neat inner artwork there. That was pretty cool. So yeah, I thought, uh, thought I would check that out. Okay, so yeah, those are the books that I picked up from the uh, the Iliad. All right, now on to the mail. First few books uh, got a little canine theme going on. Uh, I got some books with uh, with dogs. Uh, first one is The Haven by G. R. Diamond. It sounds like a pen name to me. Uh, this one was published by Playboy Press in 1977 and that's a pretty pretty cool cover i love i just absolutely love the late 70s uh horror covers really cool this one this one sounds pretty interesting um not your typical animal attack book from my understanding but uh yeah I, i'm uh, excited to uh check this one out at some point okay the next one the next canine book we're looking at is Rabid by David Ann. This book was published by Dell uh, also in 1977. And that one's cool. I love the tagline there at the top, which you can read. Um, yeah, this one looks like, looks like a lot of fun as well. But definitely my favorite of the canine trifecta here uh, of today is this one. Here we've got the Accursed, and this was published, or this was written by um, G.S. Burdick, and it was published by Playboy in 1982. Look at that cover. That is just a thing of beauty, right? It's just amazing. This is a book that uh, I uh, was not familiar with. I had never seen you know, a picture of this, and uh, it came in really, really good condition. So I'm, I'm super uh, stoked to have this one in the collection now. All right, next up, we got a couple of Dean Koontz books, uh, writing under a different name. The first one is The Mask. Uh, he published this one under the pen name Owen West, and it was put out by uh, Jove in 1981. I, uh, I really dig that that cover. I think this is the first paperback edition of this book. It's probably been reprinted like dozens of times, you know, because it's Dean Koontz. But this is a great edition, I think. Really, really cool. Um, pretty creepy, right? There's just something about like white masks, like just plain white, like Shatner masks <laughs> uh, that are just, it's just creepy. Um, so I, I do dig that. And then the other uh, Dean Koontz I got is The Face of Fear. This one he wrote under the pen name Brian Coffey, and this was published by Ballantyne in 1978. And this one is kind of, uh, kind of sounds more like a thriller. I, I don't know, it's like a woman like trapped in a high rise or something. Uh, it takes place in New York City, which is cool. So uh, yeah, it definitely sounds like some good old fun uh, late 70s, uh, you know, thriller horror action. So, uh, yeah, thought I would check that out. All right, uh, the next one we're taking a look at is Chains by Russ Martin. Uh, this is the UK edition put out by Futura in 1980. 
1979. Uh, this book was uh, originally published in the States under the name, uh, the title Rhea. And I think, uh, who, who published that? Um, Rhea was, I don't remember the publisher, the U.S. publisher. It might have been Tor. Um, I could be wrong about that. But th that one, the U.S. edition goes for like stupid money. Uh, this one, I think this cover is actually better. I, that is a creepy cover, right? I mean, that's just unsettling. Um, I love these old covers. Not only did, did the old covers have amazing like, you know, oil paintings, but at times I also like the ones that had like like photography, like that's like a real photograph. They actually got a model to pose. The lighting is amazing there in that. I mean, that that's that's a beautiful art work as well, right? I mean, that's an art form. Uh, and yeah, just really, really creepy. Um, yeah, I've not read any Russ Martin, but uh, definitely eager to see what this one's all about. It's it's pretty cool. When I read the front, it, it talked, it gave his bio. It's cool because apparently he lives here in Orange County, and he actually, uh, at the time of this publication, he worked at Orange Coast College, which is literally like five minutes away from me. So I don't know if he still, you know, lives here. Uh, but yeah, this sounds uh, pretty interesting, and um, yeah, definitely uh, excited to to check this one out. God knows when. All right, uh, really excited about this next one. Uh, next, we've got Blood Sabbath by Lee Clark. Uh, this book was published by Zebra in 1991. Uh, Lee Clark is the author of The Feeding, uh, a book from the late 80s, which I reviewed on the channel uh, last year. It was one of my favorite books that I read last year. Absolutely bonkers and just over the top and just gory and just ridiculous. I loved every second of that. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, really good condition for this book. I, I'm hoping to read this book this summer. I don't know. I might do like a satanic summer type thing. I'm, I'm toying with that idea. Or if not, I'll, I'll definitely still, you know, try to get to this one uh, very, very soon. Sounds like a fun, uh, like just summer read. Um, yeah, it's Blood Sabbath. Okay, next. Oh, here's another Campbell Black book um, who I talked about just earlier. This is The Wanting. And uh, this one was published by Jove in uh, 1987, uh, this paperback edition, looks like it first came out in 1986. Uh, as I said before, this guy, well, under the Thomas Altman name, uh, wrote that amazing novel, Black Christmas, and um, yeah, just really, really curious to read his other horror work. He didn't only write horror, he wrote other stuff, but um, you know, just judging by the quality of that novel, I know that he's very, very uh, adept at, you know, just all types, you know, any kind of writing. I'm sure any genre he was really good at. This one looks pretty cool, pretty, pretty amusing cover. Kind of, kind of creepy and kind of silly at the same time, right? I mean, those parents. Um, yeah, that that's that's awesome. So, yeah, happy to to add this one. All right, we got a few more here. Uh, next up, we've got Button Bright. Uh, this is written by Michael Curland, and this was published by Jove in 1990. And uh, I've heard really, really good things about this one. Uh, this one, it sounds amazing, a novel of childhood terror. You guys know I love my, my uh, you know, childhood a horror, uh, anything relating with, you know, with kids. And this one's got some really good reviews, and one that just doesn't get talked about very much, uh, but... The people who have read it seem to love it, so I figured, yeah, why why not? Let's check that one out. It sounds really, really interesting. Okay, next up, we've got Earth Has Been Found by uh, D.F. Jones. This book was published by Dell in 1979. Uh, some more great late 70s. Uh, this time it's like kind of like science fiction horror. It sounds kind of like a, you know, like an alien, like an alien invasion, clearly, you're right, uh, novel. But um, yeah, I love that cover. And I love the 70s for having that teal, those teal edges. That's just amazing. Uh, so yeah, this one, this one looks like a lot of fun. This just looks like a kind of like a popcorn read. But um, yeah, I had to get that. And then another one that has teal edges, I believe, yes. Okay, next, 
we've got Blood Tide by Saul Wernick. And this one uh, also was published by Dell uh, in 1979. And uh, here we have more uh, Nazi horror. Apparently this is a Nazi possession story. Uh, I don't know, like a dude finds like an old Nazi bracelet and puts it on and then becomes like possessed by like a Nazi or I, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, that cover is fantastic. And um, yeah, and it's got the teal edges, which I love. So uh, thought I would check it out. Looks, uh, looks fun. And the last book, uh, the last book I'm going to be showing you before we get to the magazines uh, is a book that I have had before, but not in very good condition. Uh, this is The Sibling by Adam Hall. This book was published by Playboy in 1979. Uh, I have owned a copy of this, but it was kind of beat up and it did not have the insert uh, cover, which is a must, that step back cover art there. I mean, that is... That is amazing, but you know, if you order this one, beware because there are a lot of copies that are missing that insert, uh, and you definitely want that. Um, and you know, I have to give a shout out here, not that he needs one from me, but um, there's a YouTube channel, I think it's pronounced Reamse, it's uh, R-E-A-M-C-E. This guy, uh, he's the reason I, I first found out about this book. And uh, he, he's not just a book channel. It's like um, he has like a bunch of stuff, like albums. I mean, his book collection is insane. This guy has like every limited edition, like hardcover of everything. Like he's got like full sets of like every Stephen King book, every Clive Barker book, just an amazing library. But um, he was one of the very first channels, I think like five or six years ago, to make videos of his vintage horror paperback collection. I remember seeing these videos way back when I was like, you know, first starting to collect. I think I was still living in Korea. And uh, he was showing like his old zebra books and his old like, like leisure books maybe. And it was just awesome. And, and I remember him talking about this book and saying that it was like one of his favorite horror novels of all time. And that was what kind of piqued my interest and why, what kind of prompted me to, to like order it in the first place. But, um, yeah, that, those were some great uh, early videos. Definitely the first videos, I believe, that were ever uploaded to YouTube that showed vintage horrorbacks. And I remember like watching those and thinking like, man, this is awesome. And I remember thinking like, what if there was a whole channel devoted solely to those vintage horror paperbacks? And I thought, nah, that'll never happen, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, check those videos out. Uh, um, they're, they're still up, uh, up like online, but, um, yeah, when he talked, he talked very highly of this book. So, uh, very curious to check it out. Happy to finally have a decent edition that has the, um, you know, that amazing step back cover art there. All right. So those are all the books, uh, but before we go, I want to show you guys, uh, I believe this is the complete set. So you guys, uh, you may know if you've seen uh, my past videos like on Fangoria and Toxic Horror, I love uh, 80s uh, horror magazines, like uh, especially like in the late 80s when horror was kind of reaching its peak, there were so many of these magazines being pumped out and a lot of them didn't last very long, including this one. Uh, but this I'm going to show you is the uh, complete five issue run of Slaughterhouse magazine. Now Slaughterhouse was meant to sort of compete with Fangoria and Gorezone. It was introduced in 1989 and I don't think it lasted even a full year. Actually, there may be more issues, but I've never seen any others. If I'm wrong, just correct me. But um, but yeah, I saw like a lot on eBay for all five for like 20 bucks. And I thought that was an amazing deal considering that some people try to sell like a single issue for like 15 or 20 bucks. But um, yeah, these are super cool. I read the first issue already. So this is issue number one of Slaughterhouse. Um, so yeah, as you can see, you know, very late 80s, uh, got that late 80s, early 90s feel. Uh, this is, is really entertaining. I read this issue, um, definitely kind of has an edgier feel, uh, seems a little more underground than Fangoria. They definitely focus on sort of the independent horror films uh, of the time, uh, and they focus almost solely on like the current movies of the time. They don't like do like the retro thing like Fangoria did of like the older uh, horror. But, um, 
yeah, it's it's really entertaining to read, uh, and this is cool because uh, this magazine had uh, really had a little bit of everything. It had like the profiles, it had the uh, the movie reviews, of course. Uh, it also had fiction in every episode. Uh, the short story in this one was kind of interesting, pretty well written, uh, and uh, and they also have book reviews. And I love uh, the magazines that have book reviews, but usually they either have just the fiction or the book reviews. They like you know, Fangoria had the the book reviews in Nightmare Library, but they didn't have any fiction. You know, Gore Zone had the the fiction, but they didn't really have the book reviews. Well, this had both. Um, although not every uh, book review is is good. Like, okay, they've got like a little review on Rex Miller's Slob, a book which I really like. This is really short. I'm gonna read you this review. Uh, it says, "Its cover, its cover was all blood and chains and blood and burlap." And blood, and the chain had blood on it, and, and blood, blood. Oops, sorry, got a little stuck there. Anyway, after reading the praises plastered all over this book, I knew, just knew, that I'd found the best psycho horror suspense book ever. But then I read it. <laughs> what kind of shitty review is that, right? I mean, like, this guy's like, too busy being snarky. How about like saying like what you didn't like about it? Give the, the guy a little respect, right? But they're not all like that. Um, they, they do have some some decent reviews. But yeah, every every issue, like this one has reviews of The Dark Tower 2, The Drawing of the Three, uh, The Blood Kiss by Dennis Etchison, Night Visions 5. So um, yeah, and it is mostly black and white, but you know, pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I swear that they're reviewing stuff that like books that I had not heard of, like um, this one, Goblins. I had never heard of that book uh, or that movie, I should say. Um, so you know, we're definitely like underground and like independent, but but pretty pretty cool. So that was issue one. Um, here we have issue two, of course, featuring Freddy Krueger. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool cover. Um, I love the old ads uh, these magazines had, like. There's an ad, a theatrical advertisement for Night of the Demons, one of my favorite uh, late 80s horror movies, a theatrical uh, promotion for it. Such a, such a great cover. Um, but yeah, this, this magazine is uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm definitely happy to add this one to the collection of, um, you know, horror magazines I have. So in this one, okay, what do we got? We've got book reviews of Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice. Uh, oh, Crucifix Autumn by Ray Garten. That's a really, uh, really good one. I think that had a title change now. It's it's known, or maybe not, but um, Crucifix Autumn, that one was also censored. They've got uh, reviews of Cabal by uh, Clive Barker. Oh, and Heat Seeker by John Shirley. I showed that in my John Shirley collection video. Um, see if there's anything else here. So, oh, here we go. So we've got like a little profile on Pet Cemetery. Speaking of which, I saw uh, the new Pet Cemetery movie. Um, it was all right. Uh, I didn't really like think it had much merit to exist. <laughs> it didn't really seem like all that different from the original, really. Um, anyway. Uh, here is issue number three. Uh, these issues didn't have, don't have like uh, specific dates on them, which is kind of annoying, but I think they all came out in 89. They might've gone into 90. Uh, on the back here, we have an ad for a very obscure horror movie called Unmasked Part 25. This is like a, like a satire, like an early satire. Uh, and there's another horror cover with a, with a face wrapped in gauze. Uh, Ron Clinton, do you have this one? It's a, it's a cool, cool cover there. But um, let's see. As far as book reviews, they have reviews of uh, The Cormorant by Stephen Gregory. I've heard good things about that. That's the St. Martin's Press book. Ooh, Deadlines by Skip Inspector. That was kind of like an anthology kind of couched in a, in a novel. Uh, Ghoul by Michael Slade. I recently showed that. Uh, Down on the Farm by John Schur. See, these guys are reviewing the kind of books that I review. That, that's awesome. Um, super, super cool. And then, um, okay, here we have issue number four. Uh, we got a cover there from Nightbreed. Um, <laughs> oh, I love this on the back. Here we have an ad for uh, 
a screenwriting competition. That's really cool. This is, I guess, um, you know, Nightmare 5 was imminent, and so they had some sort of a screenwriting competition where you, you sent like a, like a screenplay of like a nightmare that you had or something. You could like win a, a copy of the, the original screenplay. This is before internet, right, folks? So, so here in the here we've got a puppet master ad. There's the table of contents. Let's see what books they review in this one. So they review. Oh, that's cool. So the Wolf Sour by Robert McCammon, Sins of the Flesh. That's a great cover. I I have a copy of that. I haven't read it yet. Um, Carrie and Comfort by Dan Simmons. So. Yeah, and some of these reviews are like actually long and substantive. They're not all like short and snarky like the um, slob one. And then finally, uh, the last issue uh, here, issue number five, uh, featuring Mr. Jason Voorhees. That's a pretty cool cover. Um, and then on the back, we've got an ad for another very obscure, low-budget, independent horror film from the 80s, Flesh Eating Mothers. That's fantastic. And this one, um, let's see what, uh, so they've got like an interview with Kevin Tenney, I see. As far as book reviews, uh, ooh, Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. That's a fantastic book. Uh, Slugs by Sean Hudson, amazing. Uh, Dark Winds, which I've never heard of. See, these magazines are great. I, this is how I discover a lot of stuff. So like I'll, I'll read uh, some of these reviews. Oh, Cold in July by Joe R. Lansdale. Moonwalker by Rick Hodala. Very, very cool. So, yeah, these are just great, you know, like little time capsules and really like little mini time machines because, you know, you'll read these and it's like stepping back in time uh, to the late 80s. Really, really fun. So happy, uh, happy to have those. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, thanks for watching as always. Uh, you know, as usual, uh, be on the lookout for more uh, book reviews. I should have a new one up in the next four, you know, few days, probably. Uh, yeah, until next time, guys, take it easy. Peace out.